The Langattic Vibbanaval Ploughing Match and Show is held every September in the county of Monmouthshire. It has something for everybody of all ages and is an enjoyable family day out. There are many sights to see and many exhibits to visit. The Langattic Vibbanaval and District Ploughing and Agriculture Society has been in existence since 1888. This is typical of some of the sheep on display. Look at the horns on this ram, what a magnificent creature. On display as well is an excellent display of stationary engines brought to the showground by various enthusiasts. Many of these stationary engines have been reconstructed from literally a box of pieces and revealed phenomenally powerful little engines that would be used in industry and of course in agriculture. The implementation of these engines a hundred years ago would have revolutionized our forefathers who worked in agriculture. You imagine being able to use this to thresh corn or even to power a shears in which you could shear sheep with. Much work has gone into the renovation and restoration of these and all of these exhibitors should be congratulated on the amount of work they put in to produce a really good display of stationary engines for the Langottic Vibbanaval ploughing match and show. Here we see uh, Y Valley Country Store with Mr Griffiths talking to some of his customers uh, where he can tell them about new products that will be coming online over the next year and business in the agricultural world in general. It's always nice to see these people at these shows. If you fancy buying a walking stick you couldn't get a better choice than not what's on display at the show today. Look at the variety here. A walking stick for every kind of person, height, size and shape. One of the exhibitions in one of the tents which I always find fascinating is the work of the model makers. Look at this vast array of models. Each one is made handcrafted from nothing but matchsticks and glue. What an incredible display. These must have taken literally thousands of hours to produce and the detail and the fact that so many of them function and work is quite incredible. There are a whole range of them as you can see, fire engines, buses, tanks, cars and lorries and boats and even a model of our famous Mono Bridge. Well done I must say, very good indeed. The one event I always enjoy going to see is the horse ploughing. This takes you back a hundred years or more to watch how these fields were tilled by agricultural workers before and at the turn of the century. Here we see Roger Smith with his unmatched pair of horses getting everything ready to carry out high ploughing. This process takes a great deal of skill. Here we have two draft Dutch horses opening up a cut in the general ploughing match. These are from Kilcott. Roger Smith and his team make good headway on the soil in opening up their cut. The horses seem very efficient and well trained at doing this kind of work. The Dutch draft horse team from Kilcott is now being turned around and getting ready to carry on with horse ploughing. What a magnificent sight these creatures are. Look at the power in those legs. Quite amazing. Sights such as these horses pulling the plough were a far more common sight a hundred plus years ago. But it is a tribute to these exhibitors that have carried on with the craft and tradition of horse ploughing. Getting a horse to pull a plough in a straight line 
is not an easy matter at all and many hours of training have gone into this. With a few furrows opened the ploughman is now able to vary the depth of his cut and the position of his cut using a simple spanner and a few other gauges. The horses stand patiently waiting for the command to move on. We must give great thanks to the various teams that turned up here today to carry out and demonstrate the ploughing. One knows that they're trying to win a prize based on the judge's opinion of their ploughing ability. But really it comes down to hours of dedication, hard work and training to achieve a really good furrow. Roger Smith and his team certainly look as though they're on to a winning streak with this ploughing match today. Look at the final furrow. Well done Mr Smith and your team. Back in the Prodders tent the judging is all over and Cyril Brown has won a prize for the heaviest pumpkin. What a big one, what a beauty, my goodness. In the Handicrafts tent you will see where the judges have been around and awarded first, second, third and sometimes highly commended prizes for such a diverse range of handicrafts. All things that go on in the community and particularly the, those in the agricultural community are proud of taking agricultural products and turning them into wonderful foodstuffs for the eye and the tongue. Here you can see a magnificent example of really good onions and the people who have grown these would be immensely proud to have won these prizes at the Langatag Vibonaville ploughing match today. Here you will find flowers of all types, colours, shapes and sizes assembled for display in their vases. What a magnificent collection this is indeed. This has taken many hours of gardener's time to produce such a great collection as this. What a mouth-watering display of apples we have here. The judges must have had a hard time deciding on which was the best to give them first, second and third. Over at the sheep judging it is all over. Here this magnificent animal has got a first prize. So many breeds of sheep and so many devoted owners maintaining this wonderful diverse culture of sheep farming in our country. The gun dog training was as always a very interesting country sport to watch with the dogs being almost superhuman in their ability to understand the owner. The rapport between the owner and trainer is so important when out shooting with a good dog. These spaniels are a tribute to the owner and the training they've gone through. The vintage tractors are always a great sight to see. Again many of these have taken hundreds of hours to repair, renovate and get ready for the show. These were commonplace 50 years ago on the land and have been superseded now by tractors that are enormous in size and far far more powerful than these. But these have all done sterling work in the agricultural community at some stage in their lives. Raglan Young Farmers filled a tractor with balloons and uh, the public were invited to guess how many balloons were in the tractor to win a prize. An interesting area was that of Stephen and Morgan Jones. Morgan is an expert in knots and was showing us how to tie various pieces of rope into various knots for all sorts of sensible and practical agricultural uses. Morgan is certainly an expert when it comes to rope work of all sorts and seems to be 
very keen on the history of using rope in agricultural settings. Just look at these display of ropes that he has produced and tied into knots for all practical purposes. This is something you don't often see. If you liked agricultural tools, Stephen Jones had a collection that was second to none and was very knowledgeable about the use of these particular instruments in the field of agriculture and industry. The demonstration of sheep shearing is a great spectator sport at these country shows. Here the shearer is demonstrating how using modern equipment he will remove the fleece from the sheep without causing it too much distress and it is a sad reflection of the economies in agriculture these days to learn that the cost of shearing the sheep is much higher than the return for the wool when it is sold to the woolen industry. Well, on the first thing, that does the work. It's a cutter and goes back and forth. You, sharpen, you can sharpen them easy, it's a big special grinder with a, a thing. If anyone wants to look at it, you can. That brand new is about 16 to 20 quid, depending on where you are. Yeah, 16, 20 quid. That's, that's what that is. My bowler is nine quid. Yeah, yeah, that's now what they are now. The cutter. Well, the cutter's about four. Oh. Three fifty or four. Oh. Pet, if you buy both, it might be a bit cheaper. Okay. All right, we'll look to the rest of it for the money. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty, three hundred quid. That's without this bit of wind. A bit in the hand, the black flex. We call the drive. I think they're about hundred pound like this. If you get the solid drive, which I prefer, but my broke mine, they're about 250 quid. And the motor, 600 pounds. I think they're 650. 1,000 pounds and you set up. Charge, if you want to pay somebody to do it, it's about a pound, pound 20 per sheep. And the farmer's probably going to get him one for his wool. On a good day, he might get two pounds. And that's without paying the start of the other people he's got there on the day to collect the sheep. Pack the wall, pack it up. So at the end of the day, he's probably, if he breaks even, he's a very happy man. I know I gave a bloke a bill one day, and he said, well, you can have the double white pair out for the wall, and I told him no. That's a few years ago. And I was quite glad I said no, because he told me it was going to be a third of what I gave him the bill for. That's probably only worth, if I'm very lucky, 150 with this lamb's wool. If you've got the full three in the STU, you might get it around the And of course, here we have a lady with a spinning wheel, spinning wool, um, showing how the wool moves from the sheep to the finished garment once it has been knitted together. The afternoon was rounded up by a display of vintage tractors pulling a range of agricultural implements. It was nice to see these being brought back out of the field and so nice to see these vintage tractors being brought back to show the public what they used to do some decades ago. The tug of war event is always something which we look forward to. Here you can see the children struggling to overcome a military jeep and uh, would appear to be winning the battle to some degree. Here the children appear to be getting ready for a final go at pulling this jeep down through the central showground. It looks like pink wellies are the secret weapon of the day worn by these children today.